We don't hear too much from Peter Lynch these days, but he still remains one of those cult figures of investing. Over the space of a 13 year period from 1977 to around 1990, he managed to maintain an average annualised growth rate of close to 30% for his Fidelity Magellan Fund. They are just absolutely crazy returns over such a long period. Peter is synonymous with the PEG ratio, which is a ratio of the price to earnings of a company versus its growth rate. His view was that a company's share price is only fairly priced if its price to earnings ratio is equal to its growth rate. So that would mean that your peg ratio is equal to one. That is an interesting theory and well worth being able to recalculate for your own investments. We can also tweak and slightly modify that formula to work out what a fair price would be for a company's stock. We can work out the Peter Lynch fair value of a stock by taking the peg ratio, multiplying that by the earnings growth rate, and then multiplying that by the earnings per share over the trailing 12 months. And in this video, I'm just going to briefly take you through my free Google Sheets calculator here that will allow you to recalculate the Peter Lynch fair value for any stock you want. So this calculator is free to download. It is on Google Sheets, so you can just file and make a copy of it for yourself if you want to use it for yourself in future. There will be a link below in the description section. Okay, so now let's go through the calculator very quickly. Um, you will see everything highlighted in blue here is kind of a required input in order to calculate the Peter Lynch fair value of a stock. We need to put it in our stock ticker. So I'm just doing a calculation here for Coca-Cola, for example. If I put in my ticker here, that will automatically feed in the current share price of Coca-Cola as well as the current PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio of Coca-Cola, which is coming in at the moment at 27.85. Next up, we're going to need to source information on the earnings per share over the trailing 12 months for Coca-Cola. And I can just take that from Yahoo Finance very simply. You can just ignore the peg ratio for the moment because that will automatically calculate when you fill out the rest of this table, which includes your five year EBITDA growth rate. So what I do for that is there's a separate little tab here on the calculator and I go to some websites say, such as say stratosphere.io or even from Yahoo Finance if the data goes back far enough and get the company's EBITDA for um, 2022 in this case and in 2017 and the average growth rate over those five years was 6.19% and that is what I am taking here for my calculator. Then you can also go and find the expected earnings per share growth rate over the next five years or so and that will be available on the likes of Yahoo Finance as well. Once all that information then is populated on the table, it will then pump out the fair value price of the stock based on the Peter Lynch valuation model. So we can see here the formula just takes your PE ratio, it multiplies it by the PEG ratio of 4.66 and then it multiplies that by the five year EBITDA growth rate of 6.19. And then that works out a fair value for the share price of Coca-Cola of $65.84. So this valuation model is telling us that Coca-Cola is currently undervalued based on its current price. The current share price at $63.22 is below the fair value of $65.84. So it's 4.14% undervalued. A word of warning though, you should never use this valuation tool in isolation. Of course, it is a worthwhile exercise to go through and you will learn a lot by doing it but this valuation model on its own has a lot of limitations also it ignores a lot of very important business indicators such as say free cash flow your cost of equity company's gearing and many other qualitative factors that you would take into account when you are assessing whether a company is worth investing in or not this valuation model is also extremely sensitive so if i change one of the variables here let's say i increase the five-year ebitda growth rate from 6.19 to eight percent this changes things drastically all of a sudden coca-cola is actually 35% undervalued. So the valuation that it spits out is extremely sensitive to any changes in the inputs. Similarly, I reran the exercise, but this time I did it for Microsoft and Microsoft is coming in at 27% undervalued, which probably seems a bit of a stretch. The positive side of this exercise is that it is very quick to compute. So if you are preparing something like a DCF valuation model or um, a garden throat model and a couple of other different valuation models, it's very quick to also add this in and see if they're all pointing in the same direction to whether 
a stock is under or overvalued. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did I would really appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video. Um, I will leave a link to this spreadsheet down in the description section and in the comments as I was saying earlier on. So feel free to download it and use it for yourself. Um, thanks again and I'll see you guys again in the next one.